Welcome, everyone. Uh, this is the Atticus webinar on protecting your marketing pipeline uh, and preparing for a pent-up demand. Um, so we're going to go into, we know that everyone's uh, dealing with a great deal of stress right now, um, stress inside the firm, um, and marketing might not be top of mind awareness for, or the, for you, it might not be top, top of mind awareness. But it's definitely something we don't want to let slip and we want to talk about. So a uh, couple of things as we get started. And we'll put the slide. So you're, along the way, you're going to be able to interact. There's a chat function on GoToWebinar. And you can send messages to myself and Mike. And uh, you can keep it unanimous, uh, unanimous anonymous. Um, and you can also raise your hand, and Mike will then click on the icon, icon and unmute you so you can talk. Good. You know, the way we're going, Mike, we could just start this over recording the way I'm going. So I apologize, everyone. So uh, I think most people know me. I'm Mark Powers, uh, President of Atticus. And also that should be on the call very soon is Sean McNallis. And, Mark, can you uh, hear me? She, we can hear you, Sean. We can see you on the on the uh, picture on the screen, and we can hear you. But I don't know if you're web you're webcasting right now. I'm not webcasting. I'm just on audio right now, and I think there's a little lag time. So um, hopefully that'll still work out. Okay, good. So welcome everyone. Uh, so the intention is while I, I said that earlier we do want to talk we are going to talk about and focus on marketing but we want to stop for a second because if you're not doing the things that you need to, to survive first it's going to be very difficult to thrive and to market and after that our intention is to get you focused on your marketing building your brand despite the conditions that are going on right now and we want you to be in a great position after the crisis and be able to benefit from any pent-up demand depending on your practice area and you see our tagline there which you've heard us say over and over again never ever 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 stop marketing and that goes for now not even now do we get to start marketing um, you, we will we have talked about um, scaling back expenses for you but Marketing is not one of the places you want to scale back too much if you can help it. Um, now's the time to focus some time, money, um, and keep it devoted on marketing. So let's talk about um, first, we have to survive. So to be able to thrive and be able to pick up the pent up demand later on, you're going to have to protect number one, yourself, your team, and your cash flow, which is really the firm. So we did a webinar last week uh, with 10 strategies on things you can do to work on all of these things right now. But everyone right now should be virtual or have practiced it to some level. Most of you should have maxed out credit lines, preserved cash, put some sort of uh, financial plan together, looking at a worst case scenario, looking at essential and non-essential expenses, and making sure that we're cutting non-essential uh, expenses right now and we have a plan if we have to go into an austerity mode to cut deeper along the line um, everybody probably right now should be gathering information um, from the government packages both for their team and to look at for their firm um, and we also know that we probably can start looking at um, some of the opportunities that come out of this. The other thing Sean and I would say is keep the production line moving. Try to maintain meeting schedules if you have to do them virtually, um, which is the only way for most of you right now. Postpone them, don't cancel them or reschedule. We wanna keep people um, moving and making sure they know that we're still operating and we've got a plan for them. So um, Sean, anything you wanna say about this? No, I think you've covered it. Okay. Again, take care of yourself because you and your team are going to be stressed throughout this entire time. Um, our job is if you can do some of the things to protect yourself, your team, your cash flow, it's going to take the lower the anxiety level and allow you to focus on marketing. 
And if we can remove some of the uncertainties in your life um, and use facts and objective thinking, it'll allow you to stay focused in the right direction. And we would remind you that not to sound opportunistic, but every crisis can sales opportunities. Um, so the challenges that you're getting right now, we're also going to see breakthroughs out of them on how you operate, breakthrough and how you market, breakthrough and how you deal with clients, uh, breakthroughs on how you control expenses, breakthroughs on how you deal with technology. And all of this will propel you and your team to new heights. So um, again, we're not trying to be opportunistic. We just want you to know there's things that are, you're gonna start seeing opportunity and we have to watch for them. So um, our focus today is marketing and marketing is marketing. Uh, it may look a little different right now given the social distancing restrictions, um, but it's still all about people. And it's about maintaining that rapport, strengthening your relationships, and creating top of mind awareness. And it's still about staying focused and having disciplined actions. So it, there's not a lot different other than the social distancing right now. And it sounds like a lot, but we can still do all of these things. Sean, anything you want to say about this? I would like to say something about this. So the uh, social distancing means everybody you know, you can't get together with people like you normally would. So the face-to-face -face contact is out for many people, but you can still connect with people on the telephone, through email, through social media, through whatever uh, website interaction you might be able to have. So I think the breakthrough, the hidden breakthrough here in marketing is gonna be people are really gonna learn how to market much more virtually. I think there will be a lot of pent up demand when this is all over, and they'll probably look forward to going out marketing in person in the, in the future. I think everybody's be, gonna be craving a little human contact after this is over, um, but people are gonna really learn how to expand their social media presence, their online marketing presence altogether. So, you know, a question is, we said marketing is marketing. Um, does it mean that, does this crisis, this corona crisis, um, the economic slowdown, does it mean it changes anyone that we market to? So how is it different in the people we market to? Market to? And the truth is it, different, it isn't. We're still gonna market to clients. Uh, we're going to still look at past clients and connect with them. We're still going to talk to our referral sources, our top 20 and our farm team. And we're still going to interact with vendors that can refer us business, con people that contract with you. So again, that's the same as you've always done it. It's the same people. A um, couple of things to keep in mind and some guidelines as you continue to market and focus on marketing. Um, put all of your attention on clients and referral sources, not yourself. Um, I know it's uh, it sounds pretty simple, but a lot of us get inward focus and we've got a lot of stresses. Uh, now is the time when you're marketing to focus on them, adding value for them, thinking about what you can do for them. So focus on connecting, strengthening relationships and supporting them. Provide value wherever you can. Um, it's not necessarily about your services right now. It's about connection and doing that. And when you're looking for connection, uh, remember that rapport is built on common ground. A lot of your referral sources are in the same place and many of your clients, quite honestly. Most of them have businesses. Um, they've got stresses around those businesses. Uh, they've got employees that they're dealing with. They're thinking about referral. How can you connect and bond with them in this crisis? Um, obviously, we're gonna offer suggestions and uh, help them and give resources where we can. And Mark, so Sean, I'd like I'm to add. Go. I'd like to add that a lot of our attorneys are sharing links to our webinars with non-attorneys, so referral sources that are in their market and they're looking for answers. If they're in a service-based business, they can look at our webinars and really extrapolate a lot that they themselves can use. So uh, we also have a list of articles on how to control anxiety, 
um, which we can, which we have shared with you in the last webinar. You can feel free to share that with your referral sources and clients as well. So, thank you, Sean. Let's talk about marketing actions you can do right now. And um, again, what's going to happen is a lot of your competitors are going to be lost in this process. So as long as you're getting your financial plan together, your team plan together, and you have a, a game plan in front of you, you can you can focus and do marketing efforts, and it's going to make an enormous difference. You may not see any uptick, uptick in the very beginning because of all the things that are happening, but it's going to make a difference as people start surfacing and they realize they need help. So what you need to do during this session is capture at least three actions that you can take in the next two weeks. So Sean and I are going to ask you about these three actions at the end. So you may already know some actions you could do. They may be actions you've already been doing, just shift it a little bit, um, or you might get new ideas here. So let's start with our clients um, and communicating with them. So right now, there's lots of opportunities. Um, we know that some of your clients, by the way, if not your referral sources, will be hunkering, hunkering down a little bit. They'll be withdrawing. Um, so this is a great time for us to maintain close connections with them, become that helpful resource, uh, and keep communicating with them. So with our clients, um, we can still call and we can send an email to them. Uh, we can acknowledge that uh, even during this current situation, make sure they know you're on top of the case, reassure them that their matter, their file is critical to you and you're working on it. Um, and that it'll be handled with a minimum of interruption. You haven't lost focus. Um, and explain to them how they can stay connected to you, how they can get questions answered, how they can get information on their file. Uh, Sean, anything you want to say about this? I'm actually working with a non-Atticus attorney right now on an estate planning matter. And, you know, we've been encouraging all of our clients to reach out to clients and really communicate with them. What I'm experiencing right now personally is absolutely no um, communication with this attorney whatsoever. He has not reached out. Um, to me or my family in any way. And it really, it's, I'm, I'm kind of glad I have this matter going um, because it's been absolute sort of radio silence from him. And it leaves me wondering, does he have his act together? Has he gone virtual? Is he still paying attention to my case? Um, it really is unsettling, and you don't want your clients to be experiencing that. You really want to stay in touch with them, let them know that their case is still a priority. So you could send them a personalized email. You could have someone on your team send them an individual email. I'm not talking about a blast. I'm talking about a specific email to them or call. And we'll talk about some of the ways when we get to referral sources that you can manage doing calls to people. But one action is I would have a list of the clients and myself and my team would be going through that list and connecting with them. The other thing I would be doing with clients is find three things that you could do right now that would add value to them. So here are some examples, but you can come up with your own. Um, they don't necessarily need to hear anymore that you're, you're doing the, the, the normal CDC recommendations of washing your hands and sanitizing the office, everyone's expecting that. They're really looking at what you can do for them and how you could help them. So we wanna be of value. We could give them alerts on government programs as they become available. Um, we could make e-signing or remote signing available for them. Um, we could create flex hours to accommodate the shifts that they have. We could do a virtual seminar on issues that are gonna impact them. So. What do you do with your family law matter right now while you're dealing with this um, with this problem? And you can invite silently clients for that webinar, or you could record it and send it to them. Um, you could give them guides on working for home uh, that would make uh, it easier for them for working for home, childcare ideas why the kids are back at home with them. So these are not necessarily your practice area specific 
value, but there are things that, that would help them. And you want to keep that in mind. Sean, anything you would say? In a minute, we're going to talk about the formula to use uh, for social media. And there's we actually give you kind of percentage guidelines of, you know, how much you post about, you know, yourself and your firm, how much you post that's relevant to your clients and helpful to them. And then we're going to suggest a spotlight feature. So we'll talk more about this in a minute. OK, good. And so let's switch to referral sources. So again, we have our clients and we have our referral sources. So we want to pull out, for some of you, it's the top 100. Some of you, it's your top 20 list. Um, so that's the list of your most important referral sources. And one of the actions we're going to do is make a point to connect with them personally. So you can use drive time calling. So writing to someplace, going someplace, you can have a list of people and get one or two of them in uh, while you're in the car. Um, the other great thing is most of you in this call know how to block out time and do uh, time templates. So if you're working from home, block out a period of time that just focused on, it could be a half hour a day, some of you are going to need more, but it's just focused on reaching out, connecting with your referral sources. See how you can ask them, how can I support you? What can I do to help? Um, if I'm going to call them, some of you may do some emails, which is okay, but I'd prefer that you call them. Uh, you might have a call to action with them out of the call. Can we write an article together? Uh, let's help our clients by holding a joint webinar. Um, something that we can do that allow us to collaborate with them. So we talked about give a webinar. Uh, maybe we could write the, invite them to write a blog or be on our blog or be interviewed for a uh, podcast with you. Um, you could also use this time to introduce a referral source virtually to another referral sources. So you can be a broker of these relationships. It's what you might have done when you could get together for lunch. Maybe you do this virtually, reminding everyone, listen, we still have to be connected through this whole thing. Um, and I wanted to, while we're having some downtime, I wanted to introduce you to um, um, Elizabeth. And she's great in this practice area, and I thought you might want to know her, or a CPA, or a doctor, or a financial advisor. Introduce them to somebody. Sean, do you want to say anything about this? To me, that's creating good career karma, connecting your referral sources with people that can be helpful for them. And I do think it's a good idea to help people network together. I also want to speak to the first point where you say give a webinar with a referral source or do a virtual event. Some firms are doing virtual happy hours and inviting clients to come, kind of an unconventional thing to do. Um, but they're having fun with it. And, um, you know, people are finding ways to use platforms like um, Join Me and Zoom in fun ways and creating even little virtual um, get togethers, be it with clients or referral sources. So try something creative. Good. So if we're collaborating, what are the things we can collaborate on? You know, there's a, there's a lot of opportunities right now. Uh, one simple thing right now that goes a long way is you could support your healthcare workers. Um, you could go in with your referral sources to do um, to bring food over to the first responders. Uh, you could put a blood drive together with your referral sources and invite your clients to participate. Uh, look, donate to a local hospital, um, or create something where you're acknowledging individual health workers on your social media, so you actually profile them. And by the way, it's not a bad idea, as long as we're talking about healthcare workers, to do that with some of your grocery store personnel. All of those people are overwhelmed with their own personal life, and they're all working very, very hard to make sure that you have supplies. So the pharmacists, the, the people at the... Um, at, at, at the local CVSs, uh, the grocery store. There's lots of stuff we can still do. You've just got to create the opportunity to do it. And we're coming into, as you've adjusted over these last week and a half, two weeks, um, this next week and a half is going to be really an opportunity to start getting on the getting on the ball with some of these marketing activities. 
Sean, do you want to say anything about this? I'm seeing two things among the clients. Some people are, they've got their team set up and they're virtual and they actually do have, are starting to have a little bit of time on their hands so they can start thinking about marketing. And then I've seen other clients of ours who are still very much in the thick of it, transitioning to being virtual, working out problems, and can't really uh, focus on marketing quite yet. I'm hoping this webinar will speak to people no matter what position that they're in. And just to get back to this uh, acknowledging healthcare workers, you know, use your, your social media pages to highlight a friend, a relative, a spouse, a cousin who is a nurse or a doctor or a radiologist, whatever they might be, that's one thing you can do is acknowledge them on your social media page and, um, you know, it demonstrates that you are supporting and, and recognizing what they're having to go through right now. Yes, and we can do collaborative things and do blood drives and food drives, those sort of things. Absolutely. So the other thing we can do is we can start reaching out to our referral sources. Um, but if we're going to reach out to them, again, it's no different than your other marketing. Um, we just want to be memorable and we want to be helpful. So there are some light touches you can do. Um, um, you know, you could send uh, chocolates or caffeine. Um, take two uh, and s put a note on it. Take two a day as needed until the crisis has passed. So I want to say something about this. Mark, we've done this with a few of our clients. These are chocolate-covered coffee beans. And often during tax season, we have family lawyers send them out to the CPAs and the financial advisors whom they know are very busy. We're just shifting that idea and telling you to recognize some of your referral sources who are you know are scrambling send them something like this with a, a nice little card. It just cements that you're thinking about them in a creative fashion. And we want you to be the first one they remember when um, business comes back to normal. Yes, and it also sends the message that you've got things together. You're so together, you're already connecting with them and helping and supporting them. Um, people in crisis can't do that. So it sends a message you guys are strong and healthy. Um, we'll say we're putting, um, Sean mentioned that we're being a light touch to this. Um, you can use a little bit of humor, but you've got to be very careful uh, because th this is very serious to people. But this is just to their team. It's something that's saying, listen, we're, we know you're going through a lot. Um, we just want to make sure we're helping. And quite frankly, I know if some of you might not want to do this, but it is memorable. You can send a little note uh, um, with it. Um, Kill is a probiotic. Here's to your health. We'll get through this together. Uh, you can drink this, but don't use it as hand sanitizer. It, that, it's okay to do that. Uh, we're just not making light or fun of the virus itself. It's just trying to get your team a little bit of humor. But give them some something memorable at the same time. Uh, we don't want to forget about their teams as well, but you can still send gift baskets. Many of you do that. Nothing wrong with sending it right now. And tell them it's a first case, excuse me, a first aid kit uh, to help you adjust and cope. So and this is especially things. nice if you have somebody that's working in isolation, send them a little picnic basket, wine and cheese. You know, a lot of people are self-isolating or even working virtually for the first time. They feel isolated. This is a nice acknowledgement of that and sends the message that you're thinking about them. Yeah, and some of them are going to have to be creative. You're going to have to talk to somebody, get the home address and say, listen, we're sending out a couple of uh, first aid kits or gifts to your team to help them cope. And they'll usually do that. People will do that, give you the address to send it to them. And most of the stuff that's sent to the office, if we've done, if your office, if you are virtual today, your office is probably holding stuff at the post office for you anyways. And you can get that dispersed. Somebody can get that dispersed out to your team one way or the other. So and Mark, I would like to add here that 
Uh, many of you have been listing people, collecting people's preferences over the years. If you've been a client of ours, we have told you repeatedly to write down what people like in terms of food and wine and sports and memorabilia and any, any of their history of preferences. So it's a good idea if you can look in your database, find something that person is especially fond of, tailor the gift just to them or just to their office, it would be great. I also want to say if you're sending a first aid kit to the team members of a referral source, I wouldn't include wine necessarily. You could do nuts and chocolate, cheese, things like that. I wouldn't have the wine component in there for the team members, but I would put it in there for the referral source himself or herself. Mark? Yeah, I agree. And I don't think that um, um, this is a time that you definitely want people to remember you, and they will. If you sent something to the staff members, to the attorneys, to the referral sources, they're going to remember you. Um, this is nobody else is doing this right now, so it's going to be good for you to do it. You just got to get, um, you just got to get a little bit above and beyond where you are in the crisis, so you can get focused on this. So again, in the background, you should be making a list of at least three actions that you'll do in the next two weeks. The other thing you can start to do, if you're not already good at this, is focus on or hyper focus on your social media platform. Sean, do you want to talk about this a little bit? Yeah, so um, make sure that you have a good sort of spread of, of subjects on your social media platform. So 20% tw of the time you can post about firm updates. Uh, maybe you've changed your intake procedure, maybe you've changed firm hours to now see people on weekends or in week on in the evenings. Um, maybe you're revising your payment plans, whatever it is, you know, 20% of the time you can use your social media page for that. 50% of the time you should be putting things of value to clients and referral sources. So articles that will help them, videos, websites that your clients can use as resources. And if you want to put the occasional light or funny thing in there, that's great too, as long as it's very much on the light side. Then, as I said earlier, 30% of the time, shine the spotlight. So highlight one of your special referral sources. Highlight a team member who has really gone above and beyond. Uh, highlight a healthcare worker like we talked before. Use as an opportunity to acknowledge and appreciate people. It, it rounds out your social media posting. It shines the spotlight on somebody else. It shows that you're um, very giving in this world. It enhances your brand. Um, and it's a generous thing to do. Mark? So 20%, 50%, 30%. Um, again, for some of you, you're going to find um, client antiques will slow for a little while. There's going to be pent up demand, but while it's slow, these are things you can do and you can work on. Um, the other thing is you may want to do some revised pricing, and we've got to be careful with this. Uh, some of you may want to temporarily revise your retainers, your pricing, payment plans. Um, as if not a marketing strategy, a retention strategy. Now, this isn't all of your practice areas, obviously, uh, but some of you have already started to do this. You've started to adjust your uh, retentions. You may have even uh, lowered them, split them, make them, let them make it over time. Um, it, it's okay, but be careful. You don't want to dip too down, too far down in the C and D pool. Uh, because that's going to not do any advantage for you during this um, during this time that you're struggling with this. Sean, do you want to say anything about that? I think you've captured it. You're walking a fine line here. You, as a retention strategy, I think refining um, your payment plan is a good idea. I know that lowering retainers can be a little extra inducement for people to use your services right now when it's times are so tough. 
So I would do this, you know, very carefully. And like Mark said, I would really watch out. Uh, you just don't want to fill up your inventory with CND clients with this. Yeah. Mark? Yes, it's so rare that I get to hear that, though, Sean. The part What's where you that? Said, do what Mark said. The part where you said, do what Mark said. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then, you're so, right. Uh, listen, the other thing that you can do, we want to take the opportunity, if we're going to have some downtime, we want to shore up our marketing infrastructure. So uh, some of you have, haven't had the time or haven't dedicated the time to improving your website, both on a content perspective and an SEO standing perspective. So this is a good time to focus on that. Um, update your Avo account, boost your testimonials. Sean, you've said there's uh, apps that some of the clients are using for boosting their testimonials. There are, one's called BirdEye. It's a little more robust and a little more um, expensive. Uh, one of their um, packages is $250 a month. Um, check them out. They are both, both BirdEye and Revenue Jump are, they are survey um, services. They proactively reach out to your clients, they survey them, and then they turn those survey answers and interviews into uh, very nice referrals and reviews. So they'll add to your reviews wherever you're putting them. A lot of people want to boost their reviews on their uh, website. Um, they can boost the reviews on your uh, social media pages. Uh, wherever you have reviews and testimonials, they can help you get more of them. And this is not, this is, this is a really a thing where they reach out, talk to existing and past clients, and do this in a very authentic way. This is not involving, um, there's nothing shady about this. So these two have been around for a while. I think Revenue Jump is a little less expensive, starting at $39 a month. Uh, so compare and contrast uh, what they have to offer. But if you have time right now and increasing your testimonials and your review has been a project you've been putting on the back burner, uh, these two apps can help you. So uh, just a reminder. So let me just say this before we go to the reminder. So. The other things you can do is you can start a, a podcast or a blog. Uh, some of you have thought about this in the past, you just haven't had the time. So again, uh, this takes dedicated effort, but we're going to make it. We can make it happen. We can set up a YouTube channel, or we could train our marketing assistant. So we could deepen their abilities to support us. They could actually take over, help you with your social media. They might be able to help you set up some of these virtual seminars on um, on uh, Zoom or go to webinar, those sort of things. So still a lot you can do to shore up your infrastructure. Um, we do know that a lot of our marketing movement, digital marketing movement, is including some level of video. So we're not saying you have to go out and spend a fortune on this right now. But if you do have some reserves and you haven't done a video, uh, it's not a bad time to produce a branding video for your website. And you want a branding video that can be cut up and spliced up and used in little pieces that, excuse me, that can be sent out with your social media. Um, so these are, these are good to do. Um, if you listen, if you don't have a lot of cash right now, or you're, and you don't have some reserves, I would hold off on this. There's some other uh, less expensive things you do because you're going to spend a couple of grand on this quite easily. Um, but then it has to be disseminated and make sure it's put out as well. Um, so, uh, by the way, a lot of we have a lot of our clients. Just anybody that's a non-client on this. Uh, Atticus members, a lot of them in various programs, are reading a book called Story Brand, uh, which means it's a, it's, a, it's a way of getting your marketing message clear so that you can understand it and other people can understand it. And I wouldn't do a branding video until I got my 
marketing message clear. So there's formulas in that. Uh, we've done webinars on it. So uh, it's a good book to read as well right now. You could also create a crisis related video. So it's around the either the coronavirus or it's around uh, the economic slowdown. But you could do a self video, even if it's like the, the one we're doing here, you could record it either on your phone or you could use your webcam and use uh, record it on Zoom or uh, one of these other services. And someone on your team, or you could contract with someone to put it onto your website. It's just you or someone on your team talking about the issue, reassuring them, um, letting uh, new clients know how you're dealing with intake, um, making sure they know that the business is still functioning and we're not going to have the disruptions that everyone else is having. Just because there are disruptions doesn't mean that we can't continue and take care of you. Sean, anything you want to say about these crisis-related videos? Yes, I think it's a great idea if you can make it happen. Kind of the smaller, less expensive version of this would be to add a banner to the front page of your website that details these same things only in writing. So that would be the slightly lower tech version of this, but there's quite a few very nice examples out there of uh, people that have done these videos that they put smack in the middle of their homepage um, that really do a nice job of being, you know, a calm and rational voice and really reassuring existing clients and really being welcoming to new people because people in their downtime um, may be doing a lot of research right now for you know, plans they're making in the future, problems they know are still not going to be resolved. So um, good time to make a nice impression uh, when somebody visits your website. And it makes you look very current um, if you can be addressing this current moment in the form of a video. So we know it's going to be coming more and more into your future marketing anyways. Why not use some of this time to work on it? Uh, by the way, um, Sean, I have a couple of other action su suggestions for you, and then we're going to ask you to do a little assignment on getting your marketing thinking together. So um, in the meantime, if you have a question that you want us to address, um, make sure you get your hand up um, in the control function so Mike can see you, or type in a question and Mike will repeat the question. Another action, and I'm not being um, what's the word, um, trivial about this, I would recommend actually reading um, the how attorneys become great rainmakers. Um, it, it's filled with a lot of things that you can start doing or reminding. And if not this book, read a book on something about um, about doing branding, story brand, uh, other marketing books, but don't lose your focus on marketing. And in tune with this, with reading the book, uh, there's some Atticus marketing resources that are attached to this webinar. Um, some of you um, know and work with um, uh, Stephanie Knight, and she produced a virtual marketing action process to work with the book. So she took the book and took every one of the habits and the assets and gave a twist on how you could do it virtually. So um, you can download that. Um, you can download the assets and the habits, and you can also um, download Stephanie's um, suggestions on going virtual with it. Um, those, uh, those handouts, Mark, are available on the dashboard. So if you look on your GoToWebinar dashboard, you could download those two PDFs uh, directly. Great. Thank you, Mike. Perfect. Sean, anything and, you want to say about this? Well, um, you know, this is a great time. If you have a little time on your hands, um, download what Stephanie has written. It's sort of a companion to the book that um, you just showed, our book. And uh, but like I said, it's like a it's like a shortcut, like a cheat sheet 
um, that you can use, even sit down with your marketing assistant, go through these suggestions, see what you have the money for and the time for. There's a lot of um, suggestions here. Have a brainstorming um, session with your marketing assistant and really see what you can work into your routine as it stands right now. But I gotta tell you, almost everybody ought to work in emails and phone calls to their referral sources and to their clients. It doesn't cost anything. It takes a, only a little bit of time. But if you walk away from this call, having taken away nothing else, we really want you to do a, a, an outreach to clients, your best clients, the most uh, active ones, and your most active referral sources. Um, like I said, it, you don't have to put together a big plan to make that happen. That's something you can do. You could even have your team uh, reach out to two or three different clients a day, do a check-in call with them, ask how they're doing, if they need anything, give them a little update on the status of their case. Um, th that costs nothing, and it's actually some of the most meaningful um, actions that you can take. So I hope that makes it onto everybody's list, these phone calls and emails. So it's a Mark. good um, say. It's a good segue, Sean, um, because in a moment, Sean and I are going to talk to you about the action plan. And after that, we'll take some questions. And if you want to share things that you are doing that others might learn from would be valuable. So here's what we'd like to do. When we finish this call, and we'll finish it, with, if depending on the number of questions, we should finish it before the end of the hour. Take five minutes. Now, don't, don't go on to something really fast. Try to get to something else and multitask. Just stay five minutes if you haven't already done it through this webinar, and make a list of three actions that you can do in the next two weeks. So that'll be a mini marketing plan just to get you going. Um, but if you want it to take hold, set up some accountability. So those of you that are Atticus members, I'm requesting that you send your action list to your practice advisor or your resource advisor by the end of today. So a list of three things that you'll do over the next two weeks, at least three things. Um, and if try to be specific. So if you're going to say, I'm going to reach out to clients, say, uh, be a little bit more specific. In the next two weeks, I'll reach 20 clients and I'll have a personal conversation with them. Or my team will reach every single client in the next two weeks. Or I will organize a... Uh, a blood drive for with my referral sources and clients for um, an activity to do. So something like that. I want you to have uh, three actions that you'll do in the next to complete. That when I complete, you'll initiate in the next two weeks, and have some form of accountability around them. That's what's really because you're. What's going to happen here is you're going to be the whirlwind is going to be so heavy for you right now with the crisis and everything going on and your mind spinning, you need to have an action plan that says, I'm gonna do this, this, and this, and then someone to support you and say, did you get it done? What's in the way? How can I support you? So that's your practice advisor or resource advisor. Um, if you're not an Atticus member, find somebody that can um, hold you accountable and that does look out for your best interest. So Sean, with that, I'm gonna to move to the questions and answer. You okay with that? Okay, that's great. So okay. use the chat function on GoToWebinar or click the icon uh, and raise your hand and Mike can see you. Mike, do we have any questions or somebody uh, that wants to comment? We do have several questions. First, I just want to let everybody know um, we are recording today's session and we will be uh, posting uh, the recording on our website uh, within the next day. I just put into the chat box a link to our webinar page where you can look at the other upcoming webinars we have on this topic and others, as well as the past ones that we did last week on uh, coronavirus preparedness for your law firm, technology, uh, and 10 strategies. Um, so the first um, question is, how are people doing notarizations? Uh, what companies are they using to identify, um, to do identity proofing and credential author 
authentication, excuse me. So, I, you know, I, my, I try... yes, actually, uh, Stephanie just sent me um, something about this that was actually passed in the um, state of uh, Florida. Uh, why don't I, Mike, if I could uh, send this to you and you can um, post it uh, because I think that um, it would be something that's valuable for everybody. So in the state of Florida, um, all, not all notaries in Florida right now can notarize via video and can be sworn in for hearings via video. The Supreme Court of Florida has just made that possible. So um, this is really good for family law attorneys, estate planners, et cetera. Um, so Mike, I will send this to you and, and you can and post it. How about that? That'll give you more detail and people can download it. All right? Yes. And so that'll be, and that, thanks, Sean. And that'll be also, Mike, we can post that on Facebook and Twitter and on, um, um, I'm going blank, Mike. Um, Facebook, LinkedIn. Twitter, LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So also, some people, what they've done up to now until that was uh, passed, is they would have people could drive up to their office um, without getting out of the car. They could pass the documents back and forth, but through the car, they would witness it, the window of the car, they would witness it being uh, signed. So that was another thing that they did. So, other questions, Mike? Uh, yes, just one second. I'm posting the links to all of our social media accounts in the chat box as well. So if you're not currently following us, you can go to those links and follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter. Um, the next one is a very basic communication question. I currently use MailChimp for managing my client contacts, but when you use MailChimp, you can't shield the other recipient's emails. Does anyone have a recommendation for a better product? Mike, I'll, we'll defer to you on that one. Yeah, there are a number of um, uh, CRM systems that also provide email for attorneys. Um, uh, my case uh, does. Uh, but if you're looking for a marketing automation platform where you can segment uh, your contacts into different groups, uh, Infusionsoft is uh, uh, one that uh, we use. Uh, we've also used ActOn. There's HubSpot, Marketo. Some of those get a little pricey. I do believe, though, that in MailChimp and in Constant Contact, you can segment uh, your contacts now. Years ago, I think that they had fewer options, but you can segment them. However, in terms of um, uh, more security, you might, again, look at something more like Infusionsoft or even Salesforce, though it has limited email capability. Good. Thanks, Mike. Great job. Sure. Uh, Mike, other questions or anyone raising their hand to comment on things they are doing that's making a difference from a marketing perspective? Yeah, one I've got. I'll tell you, I'll read you one more question, then I'll call on someone who's got their hand raised. Um, uh, one, they'd like to know your views on reducing salaries during this period when the courts are closed. So there's salaries. I'm not sure. I'm sorry, Sean. I'm not sure what it has to do personally with what has to do with the course being closed, other than that your office will be um, shut down or gone remote and you won't have as much work. And that'll go for a number of different practice areas. Go ahead, Sean. Well, different people are so are taking different approaches to this. So I know a PI attorney. He called into our hotline yesterday. Um, of course, he can't, there's so much filing, so much court-related work that he cannot do. Um, he set up a remote folder. Or he's having his team, who is working virtually, um, do all the work they would to get ready to uh, file whatever they need to file, but they put it into this hold folder. Um, this gives him a way to monitor what they're doing uh, because there's a ton of work that they can actually do to get things to the point where they have to then involve the court system. So he's having them focus on that pipeline of readiness work. Um, they put everything in that hold folder. He can, uh, as I said, measure their productivity off of that and it's working well for them and he's bonusing them based on what they're doing all the way up to the point of, you know, taking it to court. So that's one way people are, if, if you have enough in the pipeline, even though you're dependent on the courts, if there's a way for you to 
focus the team on everything they do up till that point, uh, you may be able to keep your same team. Now, of course, the big million dollar question here is how long is this going to go on? We don't know. Is it going to go on another month, two months, six? We don't know. So some of the austerity measures that people are considering are um, as these things go on and some people are stopping month to month, week to week to take a look, uh, they are evaluating, do I do an across the board pay cut? Do I lay off some of my folks? And laying off means they're, you know, they can go ahead and get a file for unemployment. And there is no expectation that you would hire them back, though you might. Some people are furloughing uh, employees. We talked about this before. When you furlough somebody, they still collect their benefits and they get um, they can get unemployment benefits as well, but there is an expectation that you will be rehiring them. Some people, the partners and shareholders, owners, are not taking salaries at this time. They're really backing off of doing that to keep as much um, in their operations, operating account as possible. Um, uh, so there you have it. I mean, people are cutting cutting salaries across the board, next level, they're laying people off or furloughing them. In some cases, people are taking lower level team members, uh, they're working vi virtually and they're switching them to 1099 workers, giving them projects to do and paying them on a project basis as a way of holding on to them, but still creating a little bit of income for them. Some firms, some very generous firms are making loans to their uh, team members to get them through the, the rough spot. That's very generous. I don't know that many people will be able to do that. Um, all I can say is with all of this, the government is certainly working on an economic relief package, but it's none of that is fast. They, of course, have not decided exactly what it's going to be yet. But even when they do, I don't think the transition to getting money to people is going to be as, as fast as you would want it to be. So um, take, keep in mind these austerity measures, reevaluate on a weekly or monthly basis and see how you need to step down your team to a skeleton level. And I so hate to even say that because we spend 100% of our time here at Atticus teaching you how to grow your business. And um, this is undoing so much of the hard work you've, you've put in. But anyway, but we that's, can, go ahead, Mark. Yeah, but we can protect some talent. So some, you're gonna, and this sounds a little awkward also, we're gonna have to prioritize talent. There has been some talent that's been on your team for a while, quite frankly, that is mediocre or both below par. That this sounds terrible, but now's the chance to, it's time to cut the cord. Um, there's an opportunity to do that. The, there are people on your team that are very good, but their work is replaceable. And what I mean by that is um, when this clears up, there's going to be an abundance of labor in the pool market in the labor pool. And some of that's gonna be very, very good talent. So some of that's gonna allow you to upgrade and there's people that are good, but it's replaceable work. And then there's people with unique talents that either are driving uh, revenue or an extraordinary um, um, contribution to the firm that we have to find a way to protect them over time. So I know that sounds a little heartless, but there's some element that we're going to have to be prioritizing this. So, Sean, uh, we don't have a lot of time, and I want to be able to get in any comments that we can from people. Mike, if I could just comments? add, if, Mark, if I could just add, we have at least one client that is using a website uh, called lawclerk.com. We have actually more than one client that's using this, and they are seeking to only hire new talent from websites like this on a contract basis. So it's yet another option. This person plans to go virtual now uh, for the foreseeable future, uh, and this is how he's going. So it's another small option. 
Thanks, Sean. Okay, Mike, so I'm going to read you two, two suggestions, and then, I'll, and then I'm going to unmute someone. I'm going to call on them to uh, ask their question aloud. Uh, we've had um, a suggestion uh, for um, – here's one. I've already started writing Q&As for the Chamber of Commerce publication and networking with senior planning centers, but I'm a one-person show. Um, if you were to allocate money, uh, would you spend them on a marketing assistant with great tech and organizational skills or a contract attorney who could help with work that could come in? <laughs> As a combination suggestion and question. Yeah. Well, it depends. If I have a lot of work to be done, I'd be using contract attorney. Um, I, I like the idea of delegation to either the marketing, to a marketing assistant and to a contract attorney, because that frees you up to do more marketing. So for me, probably I would delegate to the attorney work that I can give to an attorney first. That frees you up to focus on managing people through this crisis, uh, marketing, and then you could easily work with a virtual marketing assistant. Okay. Um, so who is the comment, Mike? is already gone. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, um, I'm going to go ahead and unmute uh, Laura Sterling. So Laura, if you're out there, I'm going to unmute you now. Can you uh, speak aloud? Okay. Yeah, I don't hear her. She may be Laura's muted on some her problems. Phone. She took her, her hand down. So I'm going to call on Larry Henkel. Larry, I'm going to unmute you now. Larry. Yep, I'm here. Hey, uh, I'm doing something a little unusual. Hey, I, was, I was trying to, uh, I started looking to hire a bankruptcy attorney and uh, <laughs> because they've been struggling for years, generally speaking, and uh, yep. one I won't name, uh, looks like we're working out the details. I'm just going to, he's a sole practitioner and a PA, I'm just going to buy his PA and uh, yeah. just inherit his website, his phone number, and everything like that, and then put some money into marketing. I don't have to have my name on it. I don't care if anybody even knows that I own it. Right. I think it's brilliant, Larry. That's a great thing. And that's, I, 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 that's one of the things I love about you, Larry. You're, you know, you're looking ahead. You're taking actions ahead of others. But everyone, if you look at it, you are going to have um, – a lot of bankruptcies at the end of this. There's going to be a big demand. There hasn't been in an up economy for quite a while. So what Larry's doing is brilliant. I love it, Larry. Great job. Thank you. Okay. And next, another tip is I'm going through magazines from all the legal associations I'm a member of, and I'm pulling out articles I like and using that as a chance to email the author and tell them how much I appreciated the article. This is a way to keep in touch with Perfect. colleagues and meet some new ones. I always make sure to tell them the Perfect. focus of my practice and tell them how we can work together. Excellent. I love it. Great. Um, Any other comments, Mike, on what we're doing? Uh, we have a few other questions uh, and a couple of other suggestions. Um, you want a question or a suggestion? Um, I'm going to take a question, Mike. I'm going to try to um, end this one pretty close to on time, only because these get too long and people can't listen to them very often. Um, and we could stop the recording. Sean and I could stay on for a little while, but okay, in a little bit. All right. Um, one person is, says they're concerned about liability asking staff to do drive-up signings. Or do you have any comments or suggestions on that? Um, I would be, John, go ahead. I, I, you know, if you uh, are concerned about it, somebody can video the process so you have um, a recording of it in case there should be any questions. You can show what has been done. A lot of people are going to extremes, making the client use their own pen so they're not handing um, a contamin possibly contaminated pen to a client. So a client comes, signs something using their own pen. Um, the client can even wear their own gloves. If this is the kind of liability we're talking about, now if we're talking about legal liability, I would say, you know, document and record what you are doing. I think that um, the insurance companies will have to make allowances during this time because so many people are doing this. Um, I think just try to replicate what you would do in office as much as possible and document it. 
and check with your provider, your insurance provider too, if you're from a li- from if it's that kind of liability you're worried about. I will say um, any questions that Joe could answer, um, I'll be forwarding all these to Sean and um, Sean and Mark uh, either will uh, reply back to you or we'll have a member of our team get back to you. So we will address all the questions if we can't get to them on this broadcast. Um, so would you like another question, guys? Uh, sure. Let's take one more, Mike. Okay. One quick one. All right. Um, In your experience, have you seen Atticus clients be successful or not successful in experimenting providing legal services in exchange for a small percentage of ownership of a business? Historically, I've stayed away from this because of potential ethical complications, but it seems like these circumstances might be a good opportunity to experiment with it. Um, John? I have not really seen a lot of that. I do know that sometimes attorneys will restructure their pricing to be more a value-based pricing and even build in a success um, kind of a bonus for themselves in the in their actual pricing Um, you all can uh, google uh, Cobb's value curve if you want to learn more about pricing strategies Um, it, it really explains a lot of the psychology behind it but but we don't have a lot of experience with clients doing this we've had straight up bartering we've had clients you know barter for things but but not so much taking you know part ownership as part payment you know i also post that question um there's an a there's a business attorney that does um brokers buying and selling businesses. So um, he may be a good one to ask because he's an attorney and he does a lot of work. And it's Ed Alexander. He's out of Orlando, Florida. Um, His email, if you just Google Ed Alexander, uh, Orlando, Florida, you should be able to find his email address. And tell him that you were on an Atticus webinar and uh, they told they told you to email him, and uh, he'll he'll be fine, and he he would be able to address that as well. Mike, on that, I think we should. I, I don't really want to delay this too much for people and keep it going because also people have got a lot to do. We do want you to take your three actions in the next two two weeks. Um, put some accountability in place. Email your coach, your practice advisor, or your resource assistant. So. Um, Sean, with that, thank you. Mike, thank you. Stephanie, thank you. Um, we are um, know that everyone is really focusing as much as they can on helping their clients and their firm. Please do take some time to take care of yourself, too, because this is a very stressful time. So with that, um, we'll close out for now. Mike has posted other webinars. We're doing one on financial controls tomorrow. And we're doing, uh, not, I'm sorry, that's on Thursday. And we're doing one for PI attorneys tomorrow. And that should be all on the stuff Mike has posted. So with that, Mike, you all said if we can complete. Sean, you okay? Yes. I'm good. Thank you all for joining us. Hi, everyone. Great job.